Hi, welcome to Video Up. In this video, we're going to talk about the five things you should know about audio and how getting a good recording can greatly impact your video. One of the biggest problems that we encounter in the recording industry is that many, many customers overlook the importance of audio. Now, this could be just from a sheer lack of not understanding how important audio is or considerations trying to keep the budget down. Either way, you can't skimp on the audio or you will impact your video. So we're gonna go over some of those tips now. Audio is more important than your video, believe it or not. Now, before you pull out your pitchforks and berate me or leave angry comments below, hear me out for a minute. Audio quality has a psychological effect on your viewer. You can have the most beautiful looking video, it could be beautifully lit, great graphics, high definition, 4K, whatever. If it sounds bad, you're gonna break that connection with your viewer, it pulls them out of it instantly. Uh, on the other side though, is if you have an okay looking video, maybe it's not perfect, but the audio is crystal clear, you're gonna retain their attention because it's smooth and they listen to it. Audio breakups, anything that's gonna pull them out of it will disrupt your viewer's attention to your video and even if it looks gorgeous, it'll bring the quality down altogether. Now, if your video sounds like this with a lot of room echo and not professionally mic'd, your audience is gonna notice it quickly. Now, if the video quality is not exactly where it probably should be, but it still sounds clean and clear, then your project is still standing on good legs. Additionally, people will often do other things when they're watching a video, usually just by listening to it. If your audio sucks, well, then your viewership goes down the tubes. So that's number one. Audio quality is more important than video quality. Now, the next two items on our list are gonna be the two greatest factors that affect your quality, location and microphone placement. Now, location actually will have the greatest impact in your audio recording. Now, it's often overlooked because of such as video quality as in the look or basically if you have access to the place or not. But here's a few things to keep in mind to give you the best chance to get the best quality audio on a location shoot. So if you're on a bigger shoot and you're actually doing location scouting, you want to bring out your audio guy when you do the location scouting. He's gonna be able to point out things that you probably are gonna overlook. If you're gonna go ahead and shoot at night, you wanna go out and scout it at the same time at night because there might be things that are nearby that only happen at certain parts, of, uh, certain times of the day that may affect your audio, such as, oh, there's a school nearby and you know, kids go out and recess or the bell or people come up to pick up their kids and it gets noisy, or such as a train at a certain time of day. You don't want to set up a shot and then have your uh, trains constantly go in and out of your shot, completely rooting your entire day of shooting. So here's a couple tips to keep in mind when you're scouting. One is make sure that you're not just picking a room that's a complete square, um, you know, basically a box that reflects sound and increases echo. So you want to find a room that has multiple angles, not just straight rectangle. The other thing is look for soft surfaces, such as couches, chairs, carpet, instead of hardwood floor, that's a great one, or even drapes. All these little things like that help to actually soak in the sound, preventing echo. Or you can end up with audio that sounds like you're in the bathroom and no one wants that. If you can just take a little bit and think about sound recording, your crew will love you. Actually, your editors will love you because you won't have to worry about bad quality sound and that you can't use certain shots because there's, certain, there's problems with the sound. You can go with shot that works for you. So another other thing that, that you gotta worry out for is appliances. Other things that make sound effects, such as air conditioning, refrigerators, or coffee makers, anything that constantly makes sound throughout the day. You wanna make sure that you can unplug refrigerators, turn off air conditionings, these are little things that you want to make sure that you can control, cut down, preventing uh, these sounds to actually bleed into your recording. Pro tip, if you go ahead and unplug a refrigerator or freezer, put your keys inside of it. So that way when you leave, oh, that's right, I uh, left my keys in the refrigerator or fridge and you can remember to plug it back in. You don't want to go ahead and use someone's location, someone's house and leave the fridge unplugged and ruin all their food. Not a good idea. Now, the next thing to get great audio is the placement of your microphone. 
The rule of thumb is very simple. The closer, the better. Now, one of the easiest way to get the mic as close as possible is a lapel mic or a uh, wireless mic. Now, most audio crew will have one, or if not, they're pretty cheap to rent. Now, they don't always work in all, all situations. Sometimes you want to hide the microphone, you know, you don't want to see it, or you basically have too many people to, to mic or interference in the area. The next best mic in, in that case is the boom mic. The boom mic is really great. Uh, it's actually a little bit easier to set up than, the, than, than a, a wireless mic, but it usually takes another position to run. But sometimes you can't get the boom mic into the shot and you just have to go with a Pell mic or a wireless mic. It all depends. Usually in that case, you want to actually talk to your audio engineer and your audio recorder and he probably can let you know which one's the best for, for the shot. Another mic you can use is a handheld mic. Now, honestly, you probably want to keep that just for interviews. Um, you've seen it, newscasters, sports events, they hold a handheld mic and they talk back and forth. Believe it or not, that takes a little skill if you're interviewing someone with a handheld mic to actually know how to, where to hold it and where to place it. So, if you're going to use that, you want to make sure it's an interview and you also want to make sure the person holding the mic knows the basic concepts of it and understands how to hold it, where, where to position it. Overall, you want to get creative. There's a lot of times where you can't basically put the uh, lapel mic, you can't get the boom mic in the shot. You can actually take the mic and maybe behind it, hide it behind a book or behind a computer if they're supposed to be at a computer or put it in the brim of the hat, a wireless mic. There's a thousand ways you can place a mic microphone. You just want to get as close as possible and cleanly as possible. So basically, use your imagination and you'd be surprised how great audio you would get. Now, we completely understand that there's sometimes situations where you just can't get a good quality recording on set. It could be from a variety of environmental factors or budget restraints, whatever. There's still a few tricks you can try to kind of make up for that difference. Number one is voiceovers. I mean, it might not be ideal, but sometimes you can voice over and replace anything that's said on screen or even off-screen voiceovers. If you record your voiceover on set while you're there and maybe at a quiet point, you get some of the natural environmental sounds with it. It sounds a little bit cleaner. Also, you can do something that's called ADR or looping. It's a little bit trickier, but that's when you have your cast come back into the studio and they'll often listen to the edits and then they'll re-record their lines as they listen to it. It works great, but it can easily add to the cost and a little bit more time. Additionally, you want to record something that's called room tone. Whenever you're done with your takes or your crew is done with the takes and everyone's like, okay, that's a shot, have everybody pause, freeze, record a couple minutes of just sound. No one talks, no one moves, no one does anything. Silence. The microphones can pick up the natural environmental sound so that later you can use that as a track. You can lay it down throughout your whole project and it adds a consistency. So that way it kind of will hide any audio cuts, if there's any discrepancies, and it helps smooth everything out. So that's definitely something you're going to want to get or make sure your crew gets is room tone. You may hear this saying a lot. Fix it in post. No. When it comes to sound post production, sound post production is great for mixing, it's great for little adjustments. It's not a good idea to go ahead and spend all your time trying to clean up an audio track in post production, wasting your time and basically your resources, which can cost a lot of money. So, when it comes to audio, you want to go ahead and record clean sound on location. So it gives you more option post. So a little bit of time spent on location getting clean sound will save you a lot of headaches in post production. So there you have it. The five things that you should know about audio and why knowing how to get a good clean record is vital to your project. Thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to subscribe to our channel and learn some more cost saving tips and problem solving techniques. Oh, and by the way, if you are using wireless lavs, Make sure the microphone is turned off before your client goes to the bathroom because nobody wants to hear that. <laughs>